One Zambia, one nation, it's a pleasure to be with you on the news desk. I am Alice Banda to be with you and our sign language interpreter is Joas Shikombwe. Let's take a look at the stories making headlines. President Hijilema says government committed to corruption fight. Local brew kills seven in Pemba district. First Lady launches campaign against child marriage. Plus, Gophers appeal for support. And now the news in detail. President Hagainde Hijilema has reaffirmed government's commitment to fight corruption, which he has described as a cancer that retards economic development. Speaking when he launched the national policy on anti-corruption in Lusaka, President Hijilema says his government is poised to heighten the fight against corruption in order to achieve a corrupt-free Zambia. Details in the following report. Dialogue between government and chiefs is essential for harmonious and inclusive development, bridging the gap between modern state structures and traditional governance systems. Realizing this, Government, under the leadership of President Hagen Dechlema, invited 50 traditional leaders from across the 10 provinces of Zambia for a dialogue meeting where he said regular interactions between chiefs and government will foster national unity and development. In today's content, there will be issues around national development, issues around things that affect you, the traditional leaders. And because they affect you, they touch on your ability to serve, to service the subject. We would like to touch on some of those issues. Some issues we will do with the drought. As you know, we have one of the worst droughts in living memory. And we need to work together. As you know, your server and the president declared this drought as a disaster and emergence. Two things sit in there. One is to make sure that our people have food. In the 84 districts that were assessed to have been affected by the drought, and of course, across the country, where necessary. Two, to work together with yourselves to increase, improve our resilience towards climate change driven issues such as drought, such as floods, so that we are working together, partnering together. And House of Chiefs Chairperson Chief Nkambo said the traditional leadership and government are not in any competition, but are there to complement each other on issues affecting the nation. In a healthy partnership, healthy relationship, we together identify with that problem. Only then shall we provide or come up with the solutions to that problem. A mature relationship, in a mature relationship, people will say it is our problem. It is our problem. And all these, some of these challenges uh, that uh, you have alluded to, Your Excellency, all of us are affected. And so we should is a traditional leadership rally behind government and look for solutions uh, to those uh, problems. Each province was represented by five chiefs. The meeting was also attended by local government and the Rural Development Minister, Gary Nkombo, Kalan Muchima, reporting for Zanis in Osaka. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Um. Vice President Mutali Nalumango has thanked the private sector for the support rendered to government in meeting the needs of vulnerable people in the country. Mrs. Nalumango says government is working tirelessly to improve the quality of life of people and that the private sector has continued to support the cause through donations, among other acts, of kindness and solidarity. The Vice President was speaking at the handover ceremony of the donation of 40 single hospital mattresses 
and 10 ordinary mattresses, which he said are destined for Kaputa General Hospital and Form King Group of Companies Chief Executive Officer Pravin Kuma Patel acknowledged the burden to cushion the needs of vulnerable people. This is a very thoughtful thing from you, Form King, to think of the people of Kaputa very far away, but it shows who you are part of the private sector that is working with government to meet the needs of our people. What is happening is what, what you are doing is what this government envisions and also desire. And I will continue using your, this platform to call upon other, you know, private sector to continuously work with government. Because as you work with government, you work with the people. The office of the Vice President is so overwhelmed with the aid it needs to render countrywide. It can only be wise to reduce the burden by a helping hand from the private sector through corporate social responsibility. It is for this reason that Foam King has come forth to donate to your office, Your Honor. 40 single six inch hospital mattresses and 40 superior hospital pillows. And in addition, we have also included 10 by single six inch mattresses with 10 superior pillow mat uh, pillows. The governments of Zambia and Rwanda have signed a memorandum of understanding on technical cooperation in settlement improvement and the provision of mass affordable and decent housing. The MOU was signed in Kigali, Rwanda, with Zambian Minister of Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development, Charles Milopi, signing on behalf of Zambia, while Minister of Infrastructure, Jimmy Gasore, signed on behalf of Rwanda. The key cooperation in the MOU is to support the raising of awareness on important housing development through collaboration in housing national, housing fora, and similar events aimed at promoting decent housing, settlement improvement, socio-economic development, employment creation, climate resilience, and sustainable communities. Here is a report. Rwanda and Zambia have enjoyed good cooperation in various sectors like agriculture, tourism, defense, infrastructure development, and knowledge sharing and exchange across various sectors, including energy. The two countries are still exploring potential new areas of cooperation. All this is geared towards mutual objective of enhancing the social economic growth and development of citizens in the two countries. As such, the governments of Zambia and Rwanda have signed a memorandum of understanding on technical cooperation in settlement improvement and the provision of mass social, affordable and decent housing. The MOU was signed in Kigali, Rwanda, with the Zambian Minister of Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development, Charles Milupi, signing on behalf of Zambia, while Rwandanese Minister of Infrastructure, Jimmy Gasol, signed on behalf of his country. It is imperative for our two countries to further deepen project areas of cooperation, collaboration between those but not limited to formal settlement and upgrade and mass affordable housing and others. Honorable Minister, the government of the Republic of Zambia, through my ministry, has taken keen interest in the resolute efforts and innovative interventions by the government. Of providing mass affordable housing, undertaking informal settlement, upgrading, and the resource mobilization strategies of the housing. Reading from the MOU, 
the bilateral engagements focus cooperation activities in the housing sector for the purpose of improving our human settlements through the delivery of mass, social, affordable, decent, and green housing to address the housing deficit. Indeed, this is a challenge across the African continent, and it is through joint efforts and partnership like this that African countries can afford to address. The key cooperation in the MOU is to support the raising of awareness on important housing development through collaborating in hosting national housing, fora and similar events aimed at promoting decent housing settlement, improvement, social economic development, employment creation, climate resilience, and sustainable communities. Indeed, this is a challenge across the African continent, and it is through joint efforts and partnerships like these that African countries can afford to address this basic need and human right to housing. Kalan Muchima reporting. The Energy Regulation Board ERB has noted compliance failure with safety guidelines at several service stations across the country. ERB Director for Corporate and Consumer Affairs Officer Muika Malindima was speaking this morning at a safety awareness meeting with stakeholders held at his office. Details in the following report by Shilika Chabalingula. The Energy Regulation Board, ERB, is concerned with failure to comply with safety guidelines at various service stations across the country. The ERB has since shared some advice and expectations from service stations during a safety awareness meeting today. In our quest to be more responsive to our stakeholders' needs, we are therefore committed to stakeholder engagement through various programs. This is vital in order to avail a platform for stakeholders to provide input <coughs> into interventions aimed at quality service provision at service stations. During our engagement with licensees, we have noted failure to comply with safety guidelines at a number of service stations across the country. Specifically, service stations attendants are usually observed refueling public service vehicles with passengers on board. This stated non-compliance has potential to harm motorists, attendants themselves, and consumers, and investment in the petroleum subsector. While dealers are the series of assuring adherence to safety standards, regarding refueling of public service vehicles, fewer attendants are sometimes met with resistance by either motorists or passengers. The regulation board expects the following from fuel service attendants. Very important. You must familiarize yourselves with the complex handling procedure developed for use. You also need to undertake annual customer service training where attestation is documented by management. Advise customers on the safety guidelines. Other stakeholders present at the meeting also took time to share their views on safety at service stations. You need to ensure that uh, you inform the bus drivers as they come to refuel their vehicles. They need to ensure that all the passengers get off the bus and they stand at a safe distance. What is supposed to be done is for the operators to refuel that bus before you go in the bus station to allow passengers to embark, not go with passengers at the feeding station. Many times we face challenges whereby customers will come neglecting to say, you're not supposed to come with plastic containers. And we as well, as a company, are trying to help them to provide services to them that can at least help them. It is important that provision of quality petroleum products and services are done in a safe environment for the benefit of society. Shili Chabalengula for Zanis in Lusaka. The Minister of Finance has urged Zambians to remain alert and guard against money laundering and terrorism financing. 
Minister of Finance and National Planning Senior Economist Madali Somwanza says government is committed to ensuring strict compliance with international standards on combating money laundering and terrorism financing. Mr. Mwanza said this in an interview with Zanis in Kasama shortly after an engagement meeting with stakeholders on money laundering, financial terrorism, and proliferation. The National Anti-Money Laundering and Countering Terrorism Financing and Proliferation Financing Policy was launched in 2023 with the view of combating money laundering, terrorism financing, and proliferation. Smart Zambia National Coordinator Pesi Chinyama has called for review and amendment of some legislative provisions hindering the progress of digital transformation in the country. Mr. Chinyama said this in Lusaka during a workshop to review legislative provisions. Aaron Kamanga has the rest of the story. The Smart Zambia Institute has successfully held an e-government legislative review workshop in Lusaka. The workshop was aimed to identify and address legal and regulatory barriers hindering the effective implementation of e-government services, ensuring that Zambia's digital transformation agenda is on track. The event brought together representatives from various government ministries who presented their submissions on challenges they face in implementing e-government services due to existing legislative provisions. Smart Zambia National Coordinator Percy Chinyama emphasized the need for a conducive legislative framework to support the implementation of e-government services. We find that whenever the government is trying to undertake a project or something that is deemed to be important, everything else can go well. The tangible things can be undone. But when you hit a, a legal pothole, you're just stuck. You can't move. So what you're doing now is unlocking unlocking what would be the biggest showstopper for whatever we are doing in e-government, wherever we are. Officials from the Ministry of Justice highlighted the importance of submissions and reviewing legislative provisions to ensure they are digitized and aligned with the country's e-government goals. All the priority institutions uh, that have been identified as part of the work plan of the committee uh, to have them submit uh, by way of presentation the legislative provisions that they have identified in all their uh, various uh, documents, i.e. policy documents, uh, acts, uh, which are the laws, and the regulations, the SIs. Since they are the ones, they are the end users of the pieces of legislation to ensure that they do their level best to, to give us um, feedback on what is required on their end to ensure that these processes are made simpler and uh, digitized in line with the overall policy that the government has taken. After we're done with these processes, we'll, the Ministry of Justice will be very overwhelmed because then we'll have clients in terms of amending and doing everything. Aaron Kamanga for Zanis in Lusaka. Health officials in Pemba District of Southern Province are investigating a series of deaths linked to the consumption of locally brewed alcohol. According to Pemba District Health Director Grant Nkoswe, seven people have died, while nine more patients are currently admitted to Kasia Mission Hospital in Pemba. Dr. Nkoswe has disclosed to Zanis that the patients presented symptoms of headaches, blindness, and difficulty in breathing before they died. From the seven deaths, three people are brought in dead, were brought in dead at Jembe Rural Health Center, one at Moyo Hospital, while three others were brought in dead at Kasia Mission Hospital. Here is a report. Seven people have died in Pemba District, while ten others are admitted to Kasia Mission Hospital after consuming a locally brewed alcohol. According to the district health office, Patients exhibited worrying symptoms. So as of yesterday, we 
started receiving stories of uh, people taking uh, locally brewed alcohol and um, ending up being blind and also experiencing difficulties uh, breathing. So we had uh, three that came in who were brought in dead from uh, Jembo Rural Health Center. And we also had three who were brought in dead uh, at Kasia Mission Hospital. We also admitted uh, three uh, whose condition uh, conditions was not very stable. So we ended up uh, referring these three to Monze Mission Hospital. Today, uh, we can actually confirm that we've had uh, seven deaths and all these are associated with uh, the same locally brewed alcohol. The district administration is saddened about this development and is taking measures to address it. We are very saddened about the loss of life involving seven people in the district out of this suspected list beer. In this regard, as a district, we have taken some measures to control the situation. Working with some other stakeholders like the local authority, we are carrying out a sensitization exercise to sensitize our people about these suspected illicit drinks which have now claimed the lives of our people. The situation has caused serious concern among the community, particularly parents of young people. <laughs> To those criminals who are going around teaching our children to drink these illicit, illicit beers, there should be no limit of how many years they should go to prison. Still in health news, operations at the newly constructed maternity annex at Wacha Clinic in Kawe have impressed presidential delivery unit head Koso Kamwambi. Ms. Kamwambi says government's desire is not to record any maternal deaths hence the construction of the annex using the constituency development fund. Details in this report. Government's desire not to see any mother delivering from home or dying during or after delivery is slowly being realized. Construction of maternity annexes using constituency development fund is among the measures being put in place to achieve this feat. The head presidential delivery unit, Kuso Kamwambi, visited the newly constructed maternity annex at Bwacha Clinic. And for me, more than having the facility built, is the level of organization that I have seen. How you are keeping your statistics, how you are taking care of the mothers, how clean the facility itself is. And for me, it's the record that you have, that out of the 88 beds that you've had this year, there's been no mother that has died while giving birth. I think that deserves a big round of applause. And I think that's what the New Dawn Administration stands for, that's what His Excellency stands for. And we just want to encourage you to continue on what you have started here, maintain the standard that you have started. We have seen two healthy babies just being born uh, just now. And um, the cleanliness, the level of cleanliness, we can see that you're also motivated as a staff and as a group. We just hope that what you are doing here can be used as a standard even for the other communities that are coming up with maternity and The in charge at the facility says the infrastructure has improved service delivery. So with this labor world, um, our mothers can have uh, the privacy and co confidentiality that they deserve because they are delivering from a standard maternity wing unlike the room that we, we were using. Yes. And also our staff are motivated because this is a building which even when you are offering the services, you have all the rooms where you can offer the different services. These are some of the beneficiaries of the facility. Mm -hmm. 
Fila kuungungu kwa hawa. Wali kwa tafima wadi na meo wadi. Mwale mwana, hama laisa kuno, kwa nakori, ukawa hama kuri. So, ya neksi, tele feeding away kwa 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 kwa. So, what we are trying to look what it is, eh, imoto wa papata. Chimbi chitefwa ikwa, ni ambulance. Kelvin Tembo for Zanis in Kabwe, Central Province. We take a break, stay tuned for more stories. Woman Thou Art is a program that offers counsel to the female folk, sharing real life experiences and providing guidance to the women and young girls on necessary steps and conduct that will help shape and nature a sober society. Watch Woman Thou Art on Zenith TV every Wednesday at 18.30 hours on the Topster channel, channel 6 DTT and channel 458 DTH. Issue is a program that looks at topical issues happening in the country. Watch the issue every Friday at 1930 hours only on Zanis TV, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH on Topstar. Don't miss. Zanis TV presents Chayangoma on your people's channel every Fridays at 19 hours. Chayangoma is a traditional musical program that teaches Zambians norms and culture through song and dance. Watch Zanis TV on Topstar channel, channel 6 DTT and channel 458 DTH. Don't miss. Welcome back. We continue with the news and we take you to the Eastern Province. Chama District Commissioner Yobe Goma has called on farmers to grow early maturing maize to boost maize production in the country. Mr. Goma was speaking when he officiated at the commencement of the 2024 training workshop for seasonal staff in readiness for the crop marketing season organized by the Food Reserve Agency in Chama District. First Lady Motenta Hijilema has thanked traditional leaders in Eastern Province and across the country for championing the eradication of child marriages. Mrs. Hijilema has also praised Chief Tenes Kawaza of the Chewa speaking people of Sinda and Katete districts for championing the cause of ending child marriage. Mrs. Hijilema said this when she paid a courtesy call on Chief Tenes Kawaza at her palace today. Details in this report. Eastern Province has continued to rank high in teen pregnancies and early marriages, vices that account for a significant number of girls dropping out of school. Government has put in place interventions to address this social problem. Welcomed by the Provincial Minister, First Lady Mutinta Hichilema was in Katete to officiate at the Ending Child Marriages Advocates Program. It's important to realize that education is the best equalizer. Child marriage will rob you of the opportunities to pursue your education, explore your talents, and to share out the future of your dreams. Ending child marriage is not a task that falls on one individual. It requires concerted efforts of communities, traditional leaders, the government, and the civil society. I'm glad that government has done its part by enacting laws that protect the rights of the children. Our job is simply to advocate against child marriage. The province in 2023 recorded 32,964 cases of teen pregnancies compared to 
226 in 2022. The provinces among the provinces in the country with high teen frequencies, which more often than not end up in two child marriages. I stand here to declare my commitment to enhance the fight against child marriages and include it as a priority as a provincial priority. Line Ministries explained what's being done to counter this vice. Some of those initiatives are keeping girls in school, and I'm so glad that uh, the Royal Highnesses are very much aware about this. We have over 155,000 girls that have so far benefited from KGS uh, since inception in 2016. KGS used to only take care of five districts countrywide out of 116. But now we have reviewed it and we're going to cover the entire country. So that means KGS is going countrywide in all the 116 districts. The program was conducted in Chief Teneskawaza's chief dome and supported by Chief Chamoka of Central Province, who's a champion for ending child marriages. Yes, The program will be implemented with support from partners like the United Nations Population Fund and Plan International. The First Lady also made a donation of assorted items, including Mille Mille cooking oil and mattresses, among others. Abigail Kashweka reporting in Katete District. In a related development, First Lady Mutinta Hijilema has launched a campaign against child marriages in Katete District of Eastern Province. The campaign is aimed at ensuring girls remain in school as part of their human rights. Details in this report. There are hundreds of mattresses and thousands of bags of nilimi, among other items, which First Lady Mutinta Hichilema has donated to Kapoche Day Boarding Secondary School in Chief Tennis Kawaza's Chief Dome in Kapoche Constituents for her contribution to the fight against early pregnancies by school-going girls. Earlier, Ms. Hichilema paid a courtesy call on Chief Tennis Kawaza of Sinda and Katete districts, whom she praised for championing the cause of ending child marriage. <laughs> is endangering the future of our children. We know we are following you, but you are one of the pioneers in this area, in your chapter, sensitizing your community. We've been following you. That's why we are here now to encourage you, to support you, and also to come and add our voice so that together we see how we can handle this situation which is real bringing the future of our children. The chieftainess requested for more boarding facilities at Kapoche Secondary School so that school going girls are living in habitable facilities. I'm really humbled because you see how your children these issues of early marriages, early pregnancies, especially early pregnancies, they are coming from the secondary school. So our children, our girls, they are vulnerable because they are just squatting. Meanwhile, Education Permanent Secretary for Administration, Noriana Muneko, who accompanied the First Lady, said the government has already constructed modern boarding facilities at Kapoche Secondary. The good news is that even if my headmaster has lamented openly that children are vulnerable because they are lacking boarding facilities, mm -hmm. the good news is that the government is the one that has moved forward before even our operating partners to add a voice of coming up with proper weekly boarding facilities. 
Pethias Mutale for the Nis News in Katete, Eastern Province. In other news, Police Public Complaints Commission, PPCC, has embarked on a sensitization tour in Northwestern Province to educate stakeholders on the Commission's mandate. PPCC Commissioner Joseph Funkete says the Commission is, is there to enhance professionalism in the Zambia Police Service and enable them to serve citizens better. Mr. Funkete has aged the public to report any erring police officers to the Commission for action. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gwembe Day Secondary School and Chikuni Girls Secondary School engaged in a thrilling debate competition on the motion. Constituency Development Fund, CDF, and Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission, CEEC Empowerment, has created high corruption activities in constituencies. The debate was organized as part of raising awareness on the topical issues and to showcase critical thinking and public speaking skills with persuasive arguments among young people. Jolwe Hajinene has more in the following report. Gwembe Day Secondary School has held a thrilling debate competition against Sikuni Girl Secondary School. The debate session was based on a motion, Constituency Development Fund, CDF, and CEEC Empowerment has created high corruption activities in constituencies. Debaters from both teams worked tirelessly in preparation for this moment. Both schools showcased their critical thinking and public speaking skills with persuasive arguments which overwhelmed the audience and members of staff. The event that is happening today is very important because it will expose our learners to critical thinking. Uh, in order for development in our country to come to fruition, we need to have people who are enthusiastic, people who can speak to the point, people who are innovative. Debate as a, an activity is a, among the co-curricular activities that we have in the Ministry of Education. Uh, the, the reason for this is to prepare our learners and expose them to the same pressure that they will have when they go uh, for these other competitions. This program has been appreciated in a special way by participants for its significance of not only helping them improve on their vocabulary, but help them to learn other social aspects. With these debate sessions, as pupils improve grammarly and other parts, sectors of education, not just vocally, but we also understand other things that are outside the box. So here today we've learned a lot of things not just how the environment is being polluted, but just how the CDA funds the way they help us in different constituencies. This debate has helped me realize the good part and bad part of CDAs. Jory Hajin in a reporting in Gwembe District, Southern Province. And finally, we end the news on a sporting note. The Professional Golfers Association of Zambia has called for more support towards golf as a sport. PGA President Yusuf Jassat has stated that golf has been an underrated sport and the narrative can change if both government and the private sector supported it. Details in the following report. As golfers prepare for the Zambia Open Golf Tournament to be held in Quito next month, preparations for the tournament have advanced. However, Professional Golf Association of Zambia President Yusuf Jassad joined some golfers preparing for the tournament in Mazabuka District. The association is concerned in seeking support from both private and public sector for the growth of golf as a sport. I, I know that the government uh, are very much in support of the, of the development of junior golf through the Zambia Golfers Union, but we are humbly appealing to, to the government to help not just the, the junior development side, but also the professional side. Because we want to be proud and we want to see our, our professional players play on an international stage, whether it's in America, it's in Saudi Arabia, or in South Africa. So we are humbly appealing to government to come on board and help us to get and achieve those goals. The young junior golfers, the amateurs, 
to come and join this sport of golf. Let's not forget that our founding father, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, may his soul rest in peace, was an avid golfer and one of uh, one of the biggest promoters of the sport during his, his, his reign as president. On the other hand, current ranked number one golfer, Kelly Tembo, notes that golf has been underrated and the narrative should be changed. Uh, most of people who are in the rural, they see golf like a playing ground for those people who are rich, people with the already money, they go there to pass time, which is not true. These young, young, young boys and girls who are outside Lusaka or in the rural golf courses, they should come. They should know now to say that yeah, there is a, a livelihood in golf, like any other sport. Because these young ones here, yeah, they think you can only get a living through playing football. You can also get a very better living by playing golf, and there's even more money in golf. And also the lifespan for golf is long. You can play golf until to the age of 60. You can still be earning your money compared to football. When you are in the 32, 33, I think your career by that time is winding up. Selected golfers will be among some professional players joining the upcoming Zambia Golf Tournament in Kitwe. Gazala Habwanda in Mazabuka District, Southern Province. As we end the news, a recap of stories that made headlines. President Hijile Masai's government committed to corruption fight. Local brew kills seven in Pemba district. First lady launches campaign against child marriage. Plus, gophers appeal for support. On that note, we end the news. On behalf of the entire Zanis production team, not forgetting Joas Shikombwe, the sign language interpreter, I'm Alice Banda saying goodbye and God bless you.